What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another video. Uh, today, video, man, we're going to get started on the Grand National. But before I start this video, man, I want to give a big shout out to um, uh, Next Gen Speed. Um, I had some problems with one of my. Uh, let me let me turn it around so y'all can see what I'm talking about real quick. All right, on this side right here, I had a, a few bulbs burnt out right here, and I just installed these right here. So what I did, I called them, let them know that you know I had some LED lights. It's, you know they they burnt out whatever so they uh what they did they they shipped me this right here they told me to take a picture and they just shipped me out another smoke light so i get a big shout out to them and the customer service is great uh another guys another thing guys but i'm definitely gonna have to put a camera back here man this seems like it's getting worse uh this thing is shooting flames and i can tell it's burning my I know it looks like carbon and stuff, but some of my paint is discolored. It's not on that side, it's just on this side right here. And you can just tell it looks like it's, you know, heat related. So, I don't really think it's the tail, but I don't think it's heat coming from that. But I think it's just flames shooting up out of there. But I'm gonna have to get some, uh, get my camera mount back there one of these days and, and we'll catch that thing on film. But with that being said, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on this Grand National. Uh, if y'all new to the channel, the problem that I was having, the car is overheating. I don't think, well, it's not overheating, it's hitting around about 195. So what I did, I bought a few things and I'm gonna show y'all and then we're gonna get started. So this is what I got going on to help figure out the cooling issue on this car. I'm gonna remove the fans, the AC condenser and the front mount. And hopefully that'll help. So, a recap, I got new fans, an AC condenser, brand new. And this right here is the, uh, well, this is supposed to reduce your uh, temperature by 10 to 15 uh, degrees. Uh, this goes around the front mount intercooler. But, I can say again, it's not designed for my front mount, it's designed for a stock one. So, we'll see how that goes. So, let's get started. All right, so the first thing I want to do, I want to remove this wire harness. Um, this wire harness right here was for those 12-inch uh, uh, spa fans. I don't need that anymore. So not, not as I know of. So this is just like a little hot wire kit or the, the kit, the wiring kit for that. So I'm just going to disconnect the battery and remove it. I really don't know, understand um how this thing overheated or let me put this back here i need to move these wire ties i use my tool so let me just go ahead and remove this Like I say, this is the wiring kit for that uh, spa fan. And I really don't understand. You can see where where it got hot. Let me see where you at. See right here where it got hot. It looked like it was melting right inside there. So. So other than that one side of that fan, that's the one, that's the side that went out. Other than that, everything looks good. I might be able to use this, reuse this later on down the line, down the road. So let me go ahead and start taking out the other fan. I don't want to scratch, really scratch anything up as well. All right. So. Plug some of this stuff. 
Got to unplug this from the factory wire harness. Got this about saying now. So let's go compare this. Like I say, this is let me back you up a little bit. Let me talk to y'all guys. Hold on, hold on a second. Sorry, guys. So these fans right here is called the Ram. Well, back in the day, I don't know if like I say again, I don't know if they still call them the Ram Charger fans. But these what I've got uh probably in the uh mid-90s or 2000 or something. But these are the fans, they the first dual fans sell, sold for the Grand National uh, back in the 90s or 2000s. I can't remember which what it was. And they was called the Ram Charger fans. Uh, I think because Mike from Full Throttle now, he used to partner with Ram Chargers, some kind of Dodge company. And these are the first ones they sold for the Grand National. So these are the new ones that I got. And let's, let's, let's compare them. And to me, they look the same. Yeah, they really look the same. So, anyway, uh, I think like when I bought these, you had a trim the ears off right here the same thing you probably gotta do with those right there you gotta trim those that's the only difference and then i gotta remove this uh, uh kit right here from uh casper electronic i think it sold it to uh, adapt to the uh, factory harness so basically they're the same thing only thing i see different is the color of the wires where the wires at see right there see right there but anyway i'm just going something new so like i say it's the same thing but go something new let's get back to it all right the next thing i want to do i just at least want to take a shroud off right here and then we'll see if we can get behind this uh radiator without pulling or draining this radiator so hopefully we can get away with it so let me get some tools to remove that So I'll get back with y'all guys after I remove this right here. All right, so far I removed this, but like I say, I really don't want to remove this radiator. I really don't want to drain anything. So I'm going to see if I can disconnect this AC condenser, if I have enough room. Uh, that's gonna be a problem. All right. So before I can move this, uh, oh, let me talk to you. All right. So before I can move this radiator, this uh, AC condenser. As I was saying, before I can remove his AC the condenser, I forgot that my transmission cooler, I can see the tabs back there. That is, uh, it's mounted through that. So my next step is to remove the front mount. 
have to remove the front mount, drop it, and then uh, break the tabs off the uh, cooler, and then we'll go from there. So we'll, we'll get to that. All right. So before I could remove the uh, front mount, I want to test fit some of these stuff, these panels right here. So we're going to test fit them and see if they can, uh, we're going to test fit them and see if we can fit them on this front mount, this RJC front mount. So let me get y'all down underneath the car and we'll, we'll see if they'll fit. All right, guys, I know this is not the best uh, angle to see it fit, but it has to be on this side right here. So uh, they got them labeled, the driver's side top. So I don't really know how this thing will fit. I mean, it can go like that. I think it might will work. Uh, I'm not for sure, but you can see where, where it's that close. It's sealed off the, uh, I don't know if y'all can really see it, but it's, it's sealed off. Oh, shoot. Let me turn this thing around, guys. All right, so I don't know really know how this thing will fit. Uh, I don't know how low I can go. But that's the intercooler pipe. Let's see if I can back this thing out. So that's the intercooler pipe right there. I don't know how low I can get it. Uh, hmm. We'll see. We'll see. Let me see what this looks like on the inside. I really can't tell from this angle. But anyway, we'll worry about that when it's time to put the, install this. So, all right. So the first thing I got to do before I uh, drop this uh, intercooler. Uh, I can see it's, it's it needs to be cleaned in there in the fins. But anyway, before I can drop this intercooler right here, I'm going to have to remove my air dams right here. So I got to remove both of these. So, and then while I'm off, I'm going to clean my filter too. It's dirty too. So uh, let me go ahead and get this started. And then we'll remove this intercooler, the pipes and stuff like that. So let me get started. All right, guys. So now I got the got the front air dams off. Now all I gotta do now is just uh, just remove those clamps right there. I'll probably have to take it off up here too. But see, I'm gonna see if I can uh, just loosen that up and get those couples a little thing right there. Just scoot them back so I can just go ahead and drop the uh, in a cooler. Save me some time. But if not, hey, we'll see. Hopefully I can just, just 
just loosen this up and scoot these things back instead of taking the whole pipe off. We're about lining back up and stuff, so we'll see how that goes. Which I don't mind, but I'm gonna take it out. Yeah. Let's see if I can move it. It's got that one. Now, if I can't scoot it back, I'm just gonna go ahead and. What I need is some power tools, man. You gonna save me. This is old school right here. You now the technology you got, you don't have to do all this. This is like extra work. So I'm about to invest in some of that. Yeah. Yeah, this is just too much extra work for me. So. Maybe I can scoot. Scoot just back a little bit. There you go. So I got that out of the way. So let me do this other side. Okay, so far I got all this disconnected. You can see uh, the inner cooler is still hanging on there. So what I did, I put a jack stand right here. Let me see, let me back up a little bit. Underneath the inner cooler, so when I unloosen these bolts at the top, It'll rest on that until I can bring it down to the ground. I'll probably jack the car back up a little bit just uh, for the intercooler to clear for when I pull it out. So we'll see how this goes. All right, I'm gonna move this last boat. We'll see what we got. All right, I'm gonna put these somewhere where I, where's the other one at? I'm gonna go ahead and drop this in a cooler. There it is. Keep this all together. Right. Let's see if we can get it going. Dude, I didn't realize how heavy this thing was. So next thing we do, we're just gonna clean inside these fins right here, make sure some good adequate uh, airflow goes through this. So but yeah. All right guys, I'll get back with y'all. So after removing this front mount intercooler, I'm looking in here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have to move this, if y'all can see, this right, uh, transmission cooler i think i'm about to re relocate a little bit further over here so and then as you can see the condenser uh let me zoom in a little bit yeah you can see where it's bent in all the fins are kind of wavy and bent in so i don't know if y'all can see that so this thing has seen its better days so once I remove this uh, AC condenser, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna remove, I'm gonna scoot this um, transmission cooler over, probably a little bit closer to that, so I can get a little bit more airflow through this side over here, or I might have to relocate this somewhere, but we'll see. All right, so as you can see. It's kind of dirty right inside here. You got all these bugs and stuff like that. I didn't really realize how um, how heavy this thing was. This thing is really heavy. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to spray it out. I'm going to spray these fins out from the back to push all those uh, bugs near all that debris out this way. 
So I'm gonna get that done. But yeah. And then probably I'm going to try to clean the inside there in the cooler. I really don't think it's clogged up, but I'm going to let it soak in some water and then some Dawn dish detergent and let it soak overnight. If I find something in the morning that needs to be flushed out, uh, I'll do some more cleaning on it. But So that's my plan. I ain't really worried about it. I don't think it's really dirty inside, so just to make sure. So as far as right now, what I'm going to do is just going to spray it off. And I'll try to clean it up tomorrow, but I just want to spray, uh, get all these bugs and stuff out. So let me flip this thing around like I want it. And then we'll get to spraying. And the pressure, I'm not going to do a lot of pressure, just the regular water hose. I think it'd be good enough for it. Let me show y'all guys something. So, as you can see, I'm... Everything, I'm sorry for getting the but Everything's coming out pretty good. So, I just want to continue to do that just to push the bugs out of it. So, that's what I'm doing. So, now I've got a soft brush. What I want to do is try to get these bugs off the front. Uh, I ain't going to dig into it. I'm just going to give it a little clue. It's a quick clean. Yeah, there's a few things inside here. Matter of fact, let me get this water hose. All right, so now I'm gonna let that dry for a little bit. And while that dry, I'm gonna get another fresh bucket of water and then we're gonna pour it inside the intercooler just to rinse it out. All right, since I got that sprayed off and everything, let me check it, see if there's any more debris. I mean, Everything looks good. Oh, this thing being heavy, it's good. So what I'm gonna do now, I got a bucket full of water, cold water, and Don just dish detergent. I'm gonna pour it inside this to leave it soaked overnight. And if anything comes out, uh, I will do some more cleaning, but if don't, I don't see anything, I really don't think there's any problem. So I'm gonna use this Don uh, dish detergent, just let it soak for overnight. So I kind of figure if it's uh, safe for the ducks, it's safe for this in the cooler. So let me uh, pour it in here. So 
was filled up on the other side too, so. so let me just pour some in here. So I'm gonna let this uh, soak overnight and then we'll be able to, you know, finish the rest of it tomorrow. So definitely just wanna soak this overnight and see if there's any debris or anything in there. So I'll get back with y'all. Also, I just got through removing the, uh, the K&N air filter. You see how dark and, and black it is. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it soaking overnight also. Um, and see if we can get this thing cleaned up a little bit. So we'll see y'all in the morning. Hey, what's going on, All right, guys, it's going to be it for the video part two. I don't re really didn't want to drag this video out that long, but I'm just showing that I'm making progress on, uh, you know, just trying to clean everything. And uh, it's just kind of warm out here, so I'm just back and forth on this thing. So uh, tomorrow we will get everything taken apart and put back on tomorrow. But like I said, I didn't want to drag the video out. So with that being said, guys, I appreciate y'all watching. And stay tuned for part three, and we'll get everything put back together. And the only reason why I'm letting this thing soak overnight, my intercooler soak overnight, is because I always want to make sure ain't no uh, leaks or anything like that, no pinholes or anything like that in this intercooler, because I had it for a while now. So with that being said, guys, y'all stay tuned for uh, part three for the video. And with that being said, guys, I'm out.